Welcome to Homemakers Now Dig Garden in some pretty cold weather. And although the, the year is winding down in the garden, we're thinking ahead to next year already. And there's actually events coming up. Well, in January, I'm giving some talks at Westing College in Sussex. And in February 9th, I'm going to Le Manoir, the Raymond Blanc's restaurant doing a No Dig course there, No Dig Garden, believe it or not. And a couple of trips to Ireland maybe. Plus, we've just put up all our course dates on the page on my website, Homemakers Courses Days and Weekend Courses, and a few in the afternoons. So I want to show you what's going on here now. It's 14th December, which is actually a day when the, it's the shortest afternoon of the year. The mornings carry on getting darker, but the 14th of December is when the afternoons start to draw out a little bit, believe it or not. It's still dark here soon after four o'clock. And... It's also cold, as you can see, so these broad beans, we've just had a solid week of frost. This is 10, half past 10 in the morning now, and it's still below freezing. The temperature just pops above freezing briefly, and, that, and we've got a few more days of that. But they're looking okay, they're surviving. Broad beans are amazing plants. These actually went in earlier than normal, because I'm planning, my idea is to grow them for cover crop, it's called, or green manure putting goodness back into the ground through photosynthesis and piling in the carbon through their roots. So we might just take them out before planting something else in late April, May. We'll see. Uh, or I might take out every other one and crop some broad beans. You've got options. And here we have the rye. I made a video about this if you haven't seen it. So growing rye and harvesting the grain and making bread. I've got a little mill. And lo and behold, this is what it looks like at the moment, which is nothing like as good as I'd hoped. There's been wire worms here, horrible wire worms, uh, pest, soil grub eating the roots. And we've done quite a bit of work fishing around for them and, and uh, squashing them. And also we're trialing a few things to see if it helps the mustard, like the brassicas between that's mustard there, for example. That was a very late sown mustard. There's potato traps. It's pretty much frozen in the end. The, the idea is you might get a, a wireworm going in there to eat. And as we get closer to the rye, the mustard looks... Sorry, the, as we get closer to the mustard, the rye looks stronger. So this is the rye here. That's two seeds, has made all those stems already. And we'll have a look at this next year. I'm hoping that it will grow strongly and I'll get a harvest of grain to make more bread. This is just pure mustard here. It's a type of mustard called Synapsis alba, white mustard. Synapsis alba, which was sown early October, so it's got quite big. Uh, you can sow it as even late September, and then it's killed by frost. So that's brilliant for no dig. You're, you're getting all this carbon from the leaves and the roots, and the frost kills it. Then you've just got stems, you can rake them off, and you're ready to go in the spring. We put a bit of mustard on, a bit of compost on, when sowing the mustard in October. And same story here where we put compost on before transplanting the spring onions. So these spring onions went in the ground in 30th September. And it was a bit the tail end actually of quite a lot of plants with fewer in a clump. And they don't look brilliant at the moment, <laughs> but they're looking okay. You know, that's a classic overwintering crop. They're hanging in there and they got their roots growing strongly, all being well. Whereas this is a harvest which is finishing. So these end even lettuce in this bed, they've had it now. <laughs> and that, that's fine because we've picked for a good 10 weeks from this bed, just repeat picking of the outer leaves and a few leaves off the kale as well. So this has been a salad bed. Uh, probably all those plants are gonna come out now. Uh, so we've still got a few plants to clear. There's some more mustard, and we tried something different here. This was slightly later sown, 10th of October, and we popped in garlic between. You can see it there. So we haven't been able to see this garlic until very recently, until the frost. The garlic's not killed by frost, the garlic is fine in frost. The idea is to maybe get the soil really micro rich. That might help the garlic, and, and we have less rust. We've been having terrible rust problems on the garlic, and yeah, I'm trying anything. <laughs> These savoy cabbage are brilliant winter vegetable. I love them. They, they just stand however much frost comes their way. Uh, look really beautiful as well. We've been removing the outer leaves. That definitely 
helps to keep them looking nice and reduce the slug numbers. Uh, all of that goes to the compost heap and they should stand to harvest, uh, maybe not all winter, but for at least another couple of months. Whereas these plants looking very sad at the moment from frozen, that's purple sprouting broccoli, variety clara to harvest in April. And we've put this structure up. All the black netting is against pigeons because they normally don't bother me too much here, but come December in colder weather, they really get in. And you'll see in a minute some pigeon damage. They, they massacre the plants if getting on, sitting on top. <coughs> now I want to show you some storage and it's not going entirely to plan because of the, in, the depth of cold. So this shed is not insulated. It wasn't really designed for this. I, I wasn't sure what I wanted it for, actually, to be honest. But I knew this would be some of it, but I didn't imagine storing this much. Uh, we've had a very successful year, as you can see. And even things like leaks here, um, it's, that's a temporary story. So they're not frozen solid. They're frozen a bit because the temperature in here has been going quite low. That is reading only one degree cent centigrade, 34 Fahrenheit, and only just about freezing. But everything in here is frost tolerant. So the celeria, the Chinese cabbage, the radicchios, the be these beautiful white fildercrack cabbage, granite red cabbage, they can all freeze a little bit. Even the carrots that you see in the bucket there, uh, they can freeze. The one thing that isn't going to work is this fennel here. And I picked one up yesterday, I couldn't believe it. It was actually quite frozen solid. Fennel's very watery, and so I made a mistake there. I needed to have kept it out of the frost. Uh, but even these apples actually surprises me, you know, because they're quite watery, but they can freeze. That's Bramley apples. And more beautiful radicchio. That one does feel a little bit icy. But, you know, they can stand that. So they're, they're better off in here than outside getting really frozen, also getting rained on and soggy. And something also like the onions, you know, they, you've got choices there. That I prefer to keep these in the house because then they, uh, they're in dry air and they don't go mouldy so much. Same with garlic. So, this is the pigeon damage. If you see that jagged, leaves where they pecked between the veins that's classic bird it, it could be any kind of bird do that pigeons commonly they sit on top and they'll often leave a contribution behind before they fly off fortunately they haven't in this case not on the brussels but you see the brussels actually are pretty nice i'm really happy with these and um you know if you harvest them frozen like this they're obviously <laughs> best wait to leave thaw out and cook them but they're, they're sweet because the freezing increases the sugar and same for these plants too. So again, you can see the lamb's lettuce looking, uh, sorry, lamb's lettuce and swede. Lamb's lettuce freezes completely and that's totally fine. We're gonna harvest them later when it might thaw out a bit, all being well. And this is swedes of different types. And again, I've been removing the lower leaves and I don't mind if the pigeons eat these leaves now because they finish growing. The pigeons don't eat the swede roots in my experience. so. You know, I'll give them that. <laughs> and spinach, well, the, here at the moment, nothing eats the spinach, although I have known that rabbits will eat it. And uh, we haven't got many rabbits at the moment, fortunately. That's variety Medania, you can see it totally frozen. And I'm finding with that the incredible sweetness when it, when it thaws out a bit, this level of cold. Uh, it's a variety that, well, all spinach should resist cold. This one's very good at it. Uh, right, let's have a look. Oh yeah, compost. I was just sorry, just want to show you. In fact, while we're here, I could also point out the beetroot. These are amazing. I mean, look at the ice on these. I don't yet know how much they will survive this. Sometimes beetroot getting this frozen, um, it, it goes soft. Uh, but we'll see. I'm going to do a trial. It's, it's partly, we, we've harvested a lot of beetroot, got most of it in store. This is compost I just spread this morning, actually. And there's the, the icy soil underneath. 
So you can see there's not a lot of compost here, but this is really high quality compost. It's over a year old, uh, some from the pallet bed bays that we're going to look at in a minute. And we turn it just once and we don't sieve it. Pretty much, I would say a lot of that is worm cast. But see the bits of wood as well. So I'm totally happy with having those bits of wood on the surface. It's not like a layer of wood chip. It's just a bit of semi-rotten, almost rotten wood actually, which is really good for all the fungal inhabitants of soil. So when you're spreading compost, you know, don't expect it to look perfect. Don't worry if it's not. You don't have to put on a huge amount if it's really high quality. You know, probably in depth terms, that wasn't even a centimetre. But my soil is now really fertile from repeat applications of compost. I'm actually reducing the dose uh, most years now. This is the three bay pallet system. And that one's got compost that Adam turned in there uh, from here. <laughs> that one's maturing on the right. And this is the current heap. And we're doing something here which we don't normally do. And that is covering it. So this is stuff that's gone in recently. I just did a few more carrots. Um, but actually we have got a bit of warmth. Just put a thermometer in there and see. 25 degrees compared to ambient temperature of zero or minus one. But that, I'm totally happy with that. Normally in summer that would be like 50. Uh, if you get any warmth at all at this time of year, it's amazing actually. Because you've got to have quite a bit of green material to make the warmth. And that's what we don't have so much of now. We just crop residues and that, that'll be it really. So keep filling your compost heap, but don't worry if it doesn't get hot and it'll start again in the spring. And here is another application of fertility for pathways we use it for mainly. This is a very frozen pile of wood chip, which was delivered three weeks ago by a local tree surgeon. I paid him 30 pound for that. It's quite a big load. I'm. For me, that's good value. You sometimes get them free though. You know, it's up to you. I want to support the guy as well. You know, they're doing great work, these guys. Uh, and that's fresh, therefore, three, three weeks old. This is what he delivered last February. So that's, if you compare these off, I put them side by side. That's fresh. That's the same. It, it looked very similar to that when it came around nine months ago. So, that gives you an idea and I actually prefer to spread it when it's like this, like on the pathways. So that's why we leave it in a heap until we need it. So if I'm always buying a bit ahead or getting it delivered ahead. And this guy, I like his, his work because he's got a chipper that doesn't make pieces that are too big. So that, that's another factor. There's wood chip and wood chip. It's not all the same. Here you can see another bed of mustard, which we also sowed garlic. And if you look along, this is slightly early varieties of garlic. I'll explain these next year when they're, they're looking more, um, <laughs> more obvious, but there's so far, yeah, I'm impressed. And this is an interesting little planting as well, because these, these are fruit radish. These are radish, but they're not like your normal spring radish. And they're frost hardy. And I'm going to show you when we finish. We're going in the conservatory. I've got some we harvested before, so they've thawed out now. And you can see what they're like. They're, they're beautiful, actually, and really tasty. Uh, Shawo fruit, Sakurajima, the really big one, and green luobo. And they were sown on the 29th of July. That's really late. You know, that means... That gives you options for things you can sow late like that and that helps to keep your garden full to use space that might otherwise be empty. And with Nodig it's so easy to keep this all growing and you know weed free. You can see how weed free it is. Some people have been asking me recently so what weeding do you actually do? And yeah I do, I do weed. <laughs> we weed, other, you know other people weed as well but we're not very much that's the, the point. So um, quickly mention different type of Brussels sprout which is not so brilliant. It's um, Red Bull and a bit messy, but actually they're, they're tasty. It's not a hybrid and as a result you get, you generally with non-hybrids you get much smaller uh, Brussels that uh, need quite a bit of more work cleaning up. 
And I just mentioned some covers in passing. So this is thermocrop, which is different to mesh that we'll see in a minute. I prefer mesh because you can see the planting through it. This is broad beans under here. Uh, you can hardly tell they're there, but we will see some in a minute. Whereas this is mesh. And so you can see the difference. I love how visible these cauliflowers are. <laughs> and this is a variety called Alsmere, which I sowed in the last week of August, around 25th of August. Uh, that's a key time. And then you get them in the ground by an autumn equinox. And the idea is they're not too big over winter because plants that are not too big survive the frost better. And I was afraid they were going to get too big. I mean, they're pretty big already, actually. We'll, we'll see. They're, they're looking all right. Here we have the very interesting ongoing comparison between dig and no dig. So I dug this bed. I dug it last week with a spade, took out a trench of soil, put it in a wheelbarrow, put some compost in the trench, keep filling back. So all the compost here was is under the soil in a trench about that deep 20 centimeters eight inches and this one has the same amount of compost same compost but on top so that's about two and a half hours work that's about half an hour and then we do the same plantings we've put these in straight away these broad beans so I took the cover off just to show you they don't look as strong as the ones we saw before they haven't had time to get their roots established really these were sown five weeks ago those were sown three weeks ago uh, you know they're looking all right to me, except for that one. <laughs> I think that one's had it. Uh, when you, if you do get blackening on top like that, probably it's not going to pull through. And even that one actually is not brilliant. But we'll see. Uh, it's, it's a bonus if it works. It's an overwintering green manure again cover crop because the main planting happens in spring. And the results this year, we've just added everything up because we did the last harvest. 91 kilos. That's 1.5 by 5 metres. And this, 1.5 by 5 metres, same size, same amount of compost, 113 kilos. 91, 113. Two, two hours more work. Why does the world dig? <laughs> I still don't get it. I'm putting up these results on my website. And do have a look. Again, we'll put the link in the video description. Greenhouse, you can see this is nice and icy. But the temperature is above freezing. I'm looking at the thermometer up there and it's saying three degrees up there. And you can see we're, we're fleeced up. This is extra layer of protection. And I must say it's been working really well. I got this idea from Elliot and Clara Coleman at Four Seasons, and Seasons Farm in Maine. Winters there are much colder than here but lighter as well and this system for them works really well i would not do this in a normal british winter weather because fleece like this you can see how thick it is it actually keeps out at least a quarter of the light and light here is really precious plus we are more humid normally it's quite dry at the moment and that will hold humidity under there and plants like this lettuce uh, Gren grenoble red is a brilliant variety but any lettuce does not like high humidity this is some um <laughs> plants I've been raising. The broad beans, I've got a mouse trap there because they um we we lost a few and we caught a couple of mice here actually. You know, something to remember if you're sowing seeds that are nice to mice. And same with the peas. And those peas actually and these broad beans are in my smaller module. That's the 40L container wise module tray and that's the 60 C D sixty. Which if you can get a good compost, as you can see, you can still grow a decent broad bean there. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll need those plants, that's why they're still there. And I want to show you the polytunnel quickly in the same vein, because it looks almost haunted at the moment. Uh, I also want to show you the this. That's as much as I do in terms of shutting up. I don't shut the doors at night. That doesn't keep the frost out. It literally doesn't. Plastic just lets out heat. You know, it warms up beautifully if the sun's out, but at night, plastic cools down. Whether you shut the door or not, uh, the only time I shut it is in a gale, a storm. I've got a thermometer here, actually, and last night outside on my weather station, the weather lowest temperature was minus 2.2. 2. 
I'm looking at this thermometer here and it's saying it went down to minus 2.5. Actually colder in here from the lack of air movement. So just so you're clear on that. But having said that, you know, if you look under these covers, again, the plants are looking good. This is mostly brassicas this end and um, a bit of garlic coming up as well. Get less rust in here, all being well. And you can see up there um, under the fleece a bit less more and even mustard. There's a whole range of salads and we've We've picked them three times already. We're going to pick once more before Christmas. That'll be next week. Big pick. And that will hopefully keep everyone happy for a while. And then we'll take a bit of time off because they won't regrow much in January. Too dark and probably too cold. This is the small garden here where we've just harvested carrots. This is what I'd normally do actually uh, for ground preparation, <laughs> using my feet. Uh, you know, this is one way to do it. I want to get it level before spreading compost. Uh, so that'll be the next thing there. And you can see that all the plants here are looking quite frosted, but okay. And what I'll mention particularly is look at this. What, I wonder if you know what this is. It's uh, coriander. So the other day I came out and they thawed out a bit and were then standing up again and I picked it. I mean, I could even pick that one now actually and I'll take it in the kitchen. God, it's so icy, it's not really picking off. And chances are when that thaws out, that's going to be all good to eat. Coriander's an amazingly hardy plant. I, I wouldn't recommend this, you know, I'd much rather not see them so frozen as this, but don't give up on it if, if you see it looking frozen. So we're going to finish in the conservatory where I can show you a few more things uh, to do with the vegetable growing that we've just looked at and also some storage going on. Like uh, last Friday I was doing um, audio recording in a nearby studio for my No Dig book and Adam, bless him, he remembered the ochre. I'd forgotten about it. Look at this. So he, he harvested, that was five plants of ochre. We got three of these trays. And ochre is a root vegetable which actually benefits from being in light. Sunlight on it will help it to sweeten. And it, you can eat it at any stage from now. Uh, roasted is really tasty, raw in salad. And then look at this. You're probably thinking, what the hell is he doing raising tomatoes at this time of year? So basically what this is, the um, you can see it in a video short that I put up in July, maybe early August, variety called Rosada, which you, is F1 hybrid. You can't buy the seeds anymore and the seeds don't grow true because it's an F1 hybrid. So if you keep a side shoot, I put a side shoot in the compost and that raises a plant and then it's going to get too big. <laughs> what you can do is actually you can take the top off the plant and uh, get effectively another side shoot, put that in a bit of compost and you get another plant rooting. So basically what I, I'm just trying to do is keep a few rosada over, alive over winter to plant again next April. That's about winter number eight since they stopped selling the seed. Right, now this, this is sequel to the radish uh, and the leek actually. I'm uh, just intrigued. Um, we harvested these leeks this morning to see because, you know, how is that going to be after freezing? Actually, that looks really all right. But leeks, if you've got, with these leeks, so you can see by the white, the that's below ground, so that freezes less. The bit's above ground, and this is more like an autumn or summer leek, even filament. Uh, if it gets freezing and thawing too much, it can rot. doesn't like that. So it's something to watch out for. If you've got the older or over special winter varieties with the most of the stem, or shank below ground, that's, that's better for winter survival. I'm not going to grow much, but they survive at least. Now, these two radish, this one I harvested yesterday. This is Green Luobo. We'll put the name again in the description um, or subtitles. Green Luobo Shawo Fruit. This one I harvested this morning. <laughs> it's still feeling frozen. I'm curious. That's cabbage root fly. That's a typical pest of all winter. Um, or it was brassica roots, that, that's the damage it does. There's a maggot been tunnelling rather in the same way that cabbage root fly, carrot root fly does. Uh, so you trim off that. The idea of these radishes, not only they're 
beauty, but their flavour. Yeah, it's still frozen, but look at that. All being well, when that thaws out, and it's, it's reckoned to taste like a pear. Well, it does, I'm, from what I've had before. And then the green luobo, if I cut it about that, I just see. Mmm, amazing. It's got by colour. You get the beautiful patterns there going round. I'm looking forward to eating these actually. I haven't, haven't tucked in yet, but they're, again, they get sweeter uh, from being colder. So thanks for coming along. And also thanks for diving into some of the other tours I've done, because it's been an amazing year for No Dig. We've really enjoyed seeing more and more of you taking up No Dig. And I hope this has helped you to get some ideas of seasonal work. And we'll see you again in January, probably. See what the weather does. And it won't be that long before we start the year again, but there's no rush at the moment to sow anything. Uh, like, you know, a few plants to overwinter. Um, I hope that you have a lovely Christmas and festive period, however you celebrate with your family.